Hello and welcome to The Cellar Door. I'm George and I'm in the Clare Valley, famed for its world-class Rieslings. You're actually catching me at the end of a jam-packed day here at Kiri Hill Wines. I've been extremely busy. Roll the tape. North of Adelaide in the Barossa wine region, the Clare Valley is an equally renowned destination for cool climate wine lovers. Celebrated for its Riesling, it also produces world-class reds, including Shiraz. Today I'm at Kira Hill, and what better place to start than a top showbiz vineyard where I'm meeting co-founder Matt to find out why this vineyard is so special. Hello Matt. Hello George. Welcome to the iconic Showbiz Vineyard Thank in you the so beautiful much. Clare Valley. It is gorgeous. Uh, we even put on a perfect day for you in the middle of vintage. So Very considerate of you. The grapes are happy, we're happy, everyone's happy. I am thrilled. I'm holding a glass of what I believe is your wine, actually. It is my wine. One of the partners, 2019 Clare Valley Shiraz, that just won the Greatest Australian Shiraz Challenge. So, so you have the best Shiraz in I Australia. I have the best Shiraz in Australia, apparently. So Excellent. Well, as I'm the not CEO, as Kiri Hill, I think that's fair enough. I, I, so do I, which <laughs> I tell my other two partners regularly. <laughs> no competition there, of no, course. No, no, nothing. And they both have a wine <laughs> as well, I believe. Yes. So one of the partners, Sean Edwards, has the Cabernet. Uh, he used to own a Cabernet vineyard, and that's, that's drinking beautifully. Mm -hmm. And Rob Stanway, with the other partner, he owns an iconic family vineyard in, in Waterville, so he's, he's on the Riesling. But so. right here we have But we're with the Shiraz. important one. <laughs> so and are we, we're surrounded by the grapes that go into so this? So Shiraz, yeah. this is one of the blocks that's very close to being ready. This vineyard is overall about 260 hectares, right. um, which is predominantly Shiraz, Cabernet and big planting of Riesling, being the Clare Valley. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a bit of Malbec and Mataro. We bought this vineyard three years ago because it's one of the most iconic vineyards in Clare. So Jimmy Watson wines have come off here. A lot of the plantings are 1970s. A vineyard just back over here, it produces a $1,500 bottle. Another vineyard over here produces a $1,000 bottle. Another one over here is about $200 to $500 a bottle. The history and the pedigree yeah. of this site and surrounds is top of its class. Yeah. The secret to the Clare Valley is the altitude, but we would be at 400, just over 400 metres altitude here. Other vineyards in Clare sort of range from 300 to three to five, 550 metres. Okay. And that diurnal temperature fluctuation, so you get the warm days, but you get the cool nights mm. and very cold winters, which I think took my wife probably, or I don't think she's used to it yet, <laughs> after 17 years. But do the grapes enjoy that? They love it. The acids hold in the Riesling, so you get beautiful linear acids, natural acids. Same with the reds, and the soils. You know, the other secret is you can sort of see there's a lot of limestone, mm. which particularly down Waterval and this end of the valley, is sort of that, that, it's like a big sponge. This helps retain moisture in dry weather, but also offers good drainage in wet weather. I was working for one of the big corporates, and Clare was one of the regions I was looking after, so we ended up buying a vineyard up here. And then because I was going to spend a lot of time up here, we thought, oh, we found a house and thought, yep, Makes let's sense. do the big tree change. So we had just had a baby, dropped two incomes, <laughs> bought a vineyard and doubled our mortgage. So <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? My goodness. <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. It's Never looked back. Out so very yeah. well. No, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to live. You're an hour across to York Peninsula, hour and a half to Adelaide out to the Barossa, that other region we shouldn't mention. <laughs> um, it's just beautiful and central. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Just like your wine. Exactly, exactly. Cheers to you. Cheers. Thanks, Matt. So now you've tasted the finished product. Yum. 
we can taste the raw product in the beginning of the process. So oh, okay. You can you can let us know whether you think they're ready to go. I'll let you know. Fantastic. Yeah, great. You bet. One less job for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take. Is it gonna taste like the wine? Oh, it'll taste sweet. Sweet. Sweet for a start. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pick this. And then if you chew the skins. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Ready to go? I think. I think, Matt, you need maybe one more day. One more day? Mm, perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. I concur. Excellent. So the George Shiraz will be ready to go. Yep, I, I can <laughs> sign off on that. Available yes. soon. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so I've just had the best Shiraz in Australia, but there's plenty more to try, so I'm off to the Watervale Hotel, just south of Clare. Co-owner Warwick is giving me the rundown on the beautifully renovated building over a beautifully big glass of red, of course. I'm very excited to be here in your gorgeous establishment, Watervale Thank Hotel. You. Thank you. This is an iconic establishment in the Clare Valley. We're very proud of the fact that since we reopened in September 2020, that we've actually been uh, awarded 11 different awards from five different sources. So oh, wow. for the menu and restaurant, also our promotions, our food, tourism experiences, and very much for the wine list too. We've got the Restaurant Catering Association Award for the best wine list in South Australia and then the National uh, Wine List Awards for the best pub restaurant list in the country. Just a few, yeah, a few yeah. awards there. it's not bad. <laughs> Clare wines are actually quite different to most of other wine regions in the world. We're kind of like the Barossa Valley during the day and the Adelaide Hills at night. This gives a strong, ripe varietal character and also long natural acidity. Why the Rieslings are so famous, mm. but in actual fact you see that same characteristic coming through every single variety in Clare. We see our job as being to promote the diversity of Clare Valley wines. Mm. And so we've got all 30 mm. varieties grown in Clare on the list. Mm. Most wineries in Clare on the list as well. Wine flights between 5 and 7 p.m. We have wine masterclasses offered every day at 11. Every day? Every day at 11. And then we have wine match degustation dining as well. Is that every day as well? Yes, it is. What a party. <laughs> yeah. We're here now in our main dining room. We've got a large beer garden. With an outdoor barbecue? Outdoor barbecue, mm. outdoor wood oven. There's so much to explore here, but I've got work to do. So I'm meeting Kira Hill's senior winemaker, Andrew, to taste a few Clare Valley staples. I remember when I was growing up and I was a, a, a wee young man, my family used to come up to the Clare Valley every Easter um, and we used to come on a family holiday. And my father used to drag us around to the wineries and do <laughs> wine tasting. So I remember growing up as a very young man, running through the cellars here in Clare, visiting all the wineries, tasting the food. <laughs> not the wine. <laughs> yeah, but not the wine. Um, but I always had very, very fond memories of it. So for me, this is almost come full circle. Yeah, you're back running through the cellars again. Back running through the cellars again and getting to focus on one of my loves and passions, uh, Riesling. Mm -hmm. Claire makes the best Riesling yeah, in the world, I it's honestly. Got the Riesling. And it's one of the few wines I actually purchase and actually buy and store in my cellar. So mostly Claire Valley, a little bit of Eden Valley, but mostly oh, Claire yeah. Valley. So. Excellent. And is this uh, this Riesling in amongst? Certainly is. Yeah. The Settler is part of our EB Gleeson range and it's our top Riesling. So it's a single vineyard from here in, in Watervale. So mm -hmm. it's a pure Watervale expression of Riesling and it's got lovely lemon lime fruit and a lovely steely acidity and it's a mm. for this at this price point and and this particular wine it's a one that you can drink uh, early but something I'd like to see in about five to seven years when it starts to blossom out and has some wonderful flavour developed flavours. So. Mm. I would like to do that also but I think Perhaps we should sample it right now. Yeah, would you like to sample it right now? Yeah, Here we let's go. go for it. So E.B. Gleeson is sort of the founder of Claire, is that right? Yes, he was one of the early, ex early ex explorers. <laughs> You've got to work for that one. Here in Claire. <laughs> it's our premium Riesling. Mm. And this is one of your vintages? Yes, my very first vintage. Ah. So, yes, I'm very proud of this. So it's got beautiful lemon, lime, with some lovely steely acidity, it's a little bit uh, sort of mineral salts on the nose. Mm. And one of the things you'll see is a little bit of sweet spice on the nose. Mm -hmm. Really delicious. Yum. Yeah. I like this wine almost as an aperitif. I mean, being very low in alcohol, 
Mm. It's only about 12%. Something you can easily have before a meal. I quite often like to cook when I'm cooking at night, to actually you know, have a nice cold bottle of Riesling. Mm -hmm. A little bit for me, a little bit for the food. Yep, so classic. And goes very well. But once again, this is something that um, I've got to be very careful about where I've actually got to make sure I've got enough to actually age. Because <laughs> it, <is so, laughs> it is so very drinkable when it's actually young. But um, yeah, in about five years is when I actually like to start to pull it out. And, mm. and it really blossoms out to get some of that honey characteristics. Yeah. Uh, but still has a lot of that citrus fruit running through it. So. Mm. It's, a very, it's a gentle citrus, it's not sort of yeah. tart or. Well, that's one of the keys and the secrets of making a Riesling that's like this is to make sure there's enough flavour and it's not overly acidic and not overly steely when they're young. Mm. It's to make sure there's enough generosity and also to balance it out with something that's going to age as well. So, mm. yeah. To generous Rieslings. To generous, generous Rieslings. <laughs> We're just getting started, so stay tuned. Kira Hill. It's late summer and the grapes are ripe, so it's a perfect opportunity to see the vintage process. First up, I'm meeting co-founder Rob in the vines for some Shiraz picking. So Rob, how did you get into wines? My partner Sean and uh, Matt Lawson, uh, we uh, grew up with vines. Um, I helped plant our family vineyard a long time ago, don't want so to date parents, myself. <laughs> your yes, parents have a parents, vineyard? Yes, and that was uh, managed by a local guy by the name of Peter Peglitis, who's quite famous uh, in the valley. Our premium hand-picked reason comes from that vineyard at Watervale. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, the one we're walking in now, uh, Sean and I established back in uh, 1999, I think it was. This, uh, this particular This particular vineyard. vineyard which has multiple varieties of red grapes, no whites, Shiraz, Cabernet, Malbec, oh, yes. and Merlot. So in this lovely Shiraz vineyard, I might try picking a nice bunch. So um, you'll be able to give me some notes? You grab the bunch and snip. Oh, oh, oh very technical. But be gentle. Okay, all right. <laughs> I won't hurt the precious grapes. Gently but firmly hold the bunch. Snip. What do you think? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, you're an expert now. Let's try a few. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Probably a couple of days, probably end of the week, maybe. They're very sweet. Yes, they are. Lovely small berries, so mm. they'll, they'll um, have some intense flavour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and good colour. So um, it's a very good vineyard, this one. You're going to make me a beautiful wine to drink yes. one day? Yes, I am. Wonderful. <laughs> Do okay. I get the job? Yes, you're, you're hired. <laughs> OK, the grapes are picked. What's next? I'm heading into the winery where John will walk me through the process. So what we've got here is lovely hand-picked Grenache that we're starting to do a new product with. OK. So we'll do some whole bunch fermentation. About half of these whole bunches are spread across several other bins. Whole bunches are exactly that, stems and all. Before crusher destemmers were invented in the 20th century, almost all red wines were fermented with their stalks. This creates rustic and tannic wines. Today, most red wines are made from destemmed grapes, but fermenting whole bunches remains a stylistic tool for winemakers. With half the bunches kept intact, the rest is destemmed and crushed and then layered back over the whole bunches. This carbonic maceration allows a fresh and soft ferment and creates a more fruit forward end product. So now we're just crushing on top of that whole bunch that we separated before. And so this is the exact same fruit, just some that's been crushed. We just want to put a nice little layer of crushed fruit over that whole bunch, just to help it solidify and, and get a nice ferment with a bit of crushed juice. With the grapes ready to ferment, it's up the gangway for the next step. Note to self, wear a poncho next time. I feel like I'm running the gauntlet here, John. What's happening? So after crushing, all the wine end up in these little eight tonne open fermenters. Little, just a little eight tonnes. <laughs> Once we've crushed them, we'll pump the juice back over the top. And that's right. where you can see these little irrigators going around. So the reason we do that is, one, we want to aerate it. We want to put the juice back over the skins. Mm -hmm. Because that's where we get all the colour and tannins from the skins and the seeds. Right. So we'll do this twice a day 
pump it over for 15 minutes and try and draw those flavours and colour out of the grapes. Excellent. Uh, and what laundry powder do you recommend after <laughs> you've been up here? <laughs> when you're making wine, get prepared to be dirty. Because <laughs> red wine stains, especially when it's like this. Well, that's just great, isn't it? Turn them off, please. Ah, that's better. With the machines off, you get a great display of natural fermentation. There's no mechanical... No, all there's natural. There's nothing, it's just... All natural. That's the yeast converting the sugar to alcohol. That means it's a pretty healthy ferment. So mm. she's running strong, she's happy, happy bubbling away. <laughs> that is <laughs> crazy. It's like a spa. Yeah. People pay good money to swim in there. Yeah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> and that, you'll find the cloudiness out yep. later? So, so once we press, mm. it'll, it'll settle, mm -hmm. and then we rack the clean stuff off top. Look at it all bubbling away. It's like a witch's cauldron. <laughs> On that note, I think I'll leave all this to the winemakers and go back to my favourite occupation, drinking their wines. Next up we have our top Shiraz. Mm -hmm. So the Squire Shiraz is really uh, looking at a fine expression of Clear Valley Shiraz. So the style that we're hoping for here is contemporary, yet bold. So we're not looking for a wine which has huge amounts of oak. What we really want to be showing is the beautiful, bright Clear Valley fruit. Mm -hmm. So it has some lovely blue fruits, some lovely blackberries, just a hint of oak underlying and actually holding up the wine. Yeah, so we're really looking, looking for a contemporary style. More gentle. Yeah, style. it's a more gentle Shiraz with good fruit expression, which is what we're actually after. So you make wine out of fruit, so you want to be able to see the fruit in your wine. Mm -hmm. so. and is that a clear signature, the, the more gentle? Yeah, I think what you'll find is a lot more blue fruits in Clare. I find the some lovely soft tannins, not as big and heavy as maybe the Barossa and maybe not as juicy as McLaren Vale. Mm -hmm. It sort of lies somewhere in between and mm -hmm. I think that's one of the strengths, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's still, it's got that sort of dry finish, but mm. that lovely... Lovely fruit, fruit sort of washes around the, the mouth. Mm. Yeah, it's not big and it's not heavy, uh, not cumbersome. Has some elegance and some some poise to it. So mm. it's a wine that you can open now mm -hmm. and actually enjoy now. I've had a few bottles of this not soon after it was bottled, and I found it quite appealing. Like it's actually come together very, very, very nicely. And once again, I see this wine, you know. It's still got some brightness and freshness and some vibrancy. That's one of the things I try and get, particularly when I'm blending my wines together, is so they're meant to have some sort of freshness. Yeah. No one likes buying stale bread, so no one likes to buy a stale wine. So mm. you've actually got to have some fruit that jumps out of the glass and lifts up and says, hey, I'm here and, you know. And then you've got that nice contrast when you do age it. You can mm. sort of see how the yes. wine's mature. And you see the wine will get some lovely chocolatey flavours mm. and the fruit will die down a little bit and complex with that oak and it'll be lovely soft and smooth. Delicious. After the break, I'm in for a special sneak preview. I'll see you soon. Let's up the Shiraz count, shall we? With a sneaky barrel taste with winemaker Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> now, you're the winemaker here yes. at Curie Hill Estate. Correct. Yes. Yep. Um, but you are from France originally? Yes, yes. that is correct. Um, I'm actually from the Champagne region. Ah. Um, and I've arrived in Claire four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so Champagne region is a cool climate region and I was looking at discovering Australian wines and Claire just made sense to me. So Claire is well known for its, for its Rieslings mm -hmm. as well as Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. That cool climate, um, so warm days but cooler nights, mm -hmm. uh, which makes stunning, elegant, delicate Riesling. Australia was always has been on my list, so I packed a suitcase for three months, but I never left. Oh, you're right. Here you <laughs> yeah. are four years later. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So completely in love, like Claire, I call it home now. So you've started your own family, but you're also working on something new here in the winery, I believe. Yeah, that's right. We're able to play around with small batches. Currently in development is a premium Shiraz from the iconic Sherbers Vineyard. 
So it's been hand-picked and actually hand-selected. So each bunch is actually graded as we Each actually, individual bunch. Yeah, that's right. We're currently sitting in French oak. Oh, how appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so this hasn't been tasted no, yet, not yet. Been made no, not, not yet. Um, so, are you telling me this is a brand new exclusive? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're the first to, to try. <laughs> so, How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we dip in? Yeah, sure. So, Shobas Road uh, Vineyard is lying on a stunning and unique type soil, uh, terra rossa over limestone, and they're quite low in fertility, which means that the vines have very few nutrients, which makes the vine produce small berries. Uh, so the flavor's quite strong. That's right. Look at that color. Yeah, so that's stunning color I was talking about, that deep purple. Almost a purple, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right, deep dark purple. Um, so is that because the grapes are so small that there's a lot more skin contact? Yeah, that's right. So Shabra's Road produces those small berries, low bunch weight, and so it's more concentrated. And so uh, we've got a lot more tannins and anthocyan, mm -hmm. uh, which made that beautiful color aging in French barrels for a bit. How long is a bit? Like when can we expect to see this? We will um, mm -hmm. continuously taste, taste off. Ah, right. And yeah, just wait for the optimum time for mm -hmm. us to actually uh, rack off barrel and release. How but exciting. Yeah, yeah, it takes time um, yeah. to make good things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so should we try this? Can I try this? Absolutely. I brought my own glass. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, very well done. Yeah. So it's already showing those dark concentrated fruits. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're using different techniques depending on the type of wine we want to produce. For that one, which is a premium wine, we try to have the least in intervention. Mm. So you sort of let the grapes that you've selected bunch by bunch do all the, all the work. Yeah, that's right. And so we've done those manual plunging to try to extract the color and the tannins, it's natural tannins, and trying to build up that structure with the barrel aging. Mm -hmm. It's got a beautiful weight already, body weight. The tannins are amazing. Yeah. The legs. The, the legs, yes. <laughs> Although I think some of those legs are outside the glass. I got a little bit too enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. So it's still young, it still has those young tannins. So we try, we're, we're barraging to try to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, a, it's like a peppery sort of spicy. Which is a characteristic of Shiraz, especially grown in the cooler conditions. It's mm. good, you've got the spices at the end of the palate. They, but uh, they're sort of more front of the palate at this point. Mm, yes, yeah, because yeah, it's still a young, um, a it's young wine. It's still delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing it with me, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Cheers. One more little taste. It's not all about Shiraz though, so it's time to try the classic blend of Cabernet Malbec. The Cab Malbec is a bit of a classic blend here in Clare. Mm -hmm. There's some quite famous wines that have come out of the Clare that are Cabernet and Malbec. Cabernet in Clare is actually uh, a lovely beast. Malbec is sort of a lesser known variety, but adds complexity and some deliciousness to the middle. Uh, once again, it has a little bit sort of, I described it as blueberry jam kind of character mm. actually in the middle of the pack and helps the cabernet actually fill out. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's... Yeah, so it's a, Malbec on its own is a much bigger wine. Yes, yes. So cabernet you'll find sometimes has a, a little bit of a hole in the middle and Malbec actually helps fill that right out and actually blossom out. So mm -hmm. cabernet, this is uh, the last one we'll taste. Mm -hmm. And this has got, because the tannins in it, it's quite a big wine. So this is sort of the big sibling to the other one. Yes. In the same range as the Squire, something for the more bolder wine drinker. Mm -hmm. so. It still doesn't sort of overpower, does it? No, mm. no. Mm. Two years older than the Squire, so showing a little bit more age. Yeah. Once again, still quite soft. Lots of fruit, lots of juiciness, loads of flavour on the palate. You're not searching for things and it's not ripping your mouth out with tannin as well. Once again, that, that no. wine is just starting to soften out. 
But they're all there. Mm. They're definitely all yeah, there. Yeah, all the layers are all there through the Cabernet, through the Malbec. Mm. You know, you can see each one of them within that palette. And it's, uh, yeah, a del very delicious drinker at the moment. Yeah. So. Do you have a favourite at the moment? I drink Riesling every night. <laughs> <laughs> I do drink Riesling every night, but when the weather cools off a little bit, the Shiraz is probably my favourite. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite fascinated with the, particularly the 2020 Squire, which is looking really, really good. Mm. So mm. Can't wait to see what happens next. Yes, I'll have to give up drinking the Riesling and put it aside. Yeah, so that's the trick, isn't it? That is the trick, <laughs> yeah. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing these delicious wines with me. Not a problem, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. It's the end of my time here in the Clare Valley and what better way to finish than with the region's most celebrated variety, Riesling. So Rob, we are drinking your partner series Riesling. That's correct, yes. Your this is the 220 there. Riesling uh, partner series, which uh, one of the three with the Shiraz and the Cabernet, mm. uh, which are uh, all signed off by one of the three partners each. And Matt did say that his was the best. Yeah, but his... He hasn't got much taste, you know, so. <laughs> but no, they've, they've all shown very well and they're all really good wines, so. Mm -hmm. And named for the partners, but you and Sean were the founders, I believe. Yes, yeah, so uh, over 20 years ago, we put the idea together and built the wineries. There were some other partners in those days. Well, Rob, I have to say, it is a rare treat for me to be able to see everything that happens from the grape to the glass. So thank you for sharing that with me. Oh, you're welcome. Certainly the best time to be here. Yeah. Uh, fruit coming in. Uh, the fermenter's bubbling away yeah, uh, and still some grapes on the vine to have a look at. Including yeah. the grapes that I picked, which I believe are going into the George. Yeah, she did a half reasonable job of that. Oh, so, thank you, you so know. much. <laughs> cheers, bro. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> it's been a packed day at Kira Hill, but my time in South Australia isn't over yet. Next time on The Cellar Door, I'll be visiting Never Never Distillery for all things gin. See you then. <laughs> <laughs>